What we're looking at here now is that that research you've just been doing into those four articles helped you to understand what stakeholders are all about. Now, this is really designed as a workshop to help you connect that to the work you're doing for your assignment. <coughs> and it's valuable to identify the stakeholders who need to be considered for your IT service you're creating. It's also, ama hopefully, amazingly valuable for you in terms of understanding what your client needs for group project with Clive. Fits in exactly with that. It also helps you in IT product development because you again have to think about who are the stakeholders who are going to use that design that you're coming up with for Dennis. So again, providing the linkages between almost all of the modules you're doing at the moment in your second first semester of your second year. So it's kind of an interesting sort of way to look at things. And I guess in one sense, some of the answers you're going to come to in looking at those four articles you've been asked to look at, these are kind of definitions that pop out of the woodwork. The people who gain benefits. And when we're looking at IT services, think about the apps you've got on your smart devices or apps you have running on your PCs. You are the users, so users can actually gain benefits. But it might also be some of the benefits flow to the providers of that service. And if you think about Amazon, the, the app that you get on your smart device does two things. One, it helps you to find the widget, the book, the video, the home hardware that you want to buy. But it also serves the interest of Amazon because it means that revenue is flowing in their direction and profit is flowing in their direction. It could be, <coughs> or if you think about Amazon and other org companies and Google and Bing, search engines apparently, because that's what we use them for, but actually they're getting benefits in the revenue that flows because of advertising which they're providing for somebody else. And it might be, you could say, it's the retailers who are advertising on Google who are the owners who pay for and support the advertising targeting engines in Google and actually pay for, provide most of the revenue that pays for Google to keep providing our free service. And then if you link into the Zachman Enterprise architecture, they might be considered to be part of the stakeholder cloud uh, ecosystem, as they now call it, that help design these services, these technologies. The point about this is not that this is the, these are the only stakeholders, but these are just some of the most obvious ones. And in teaching you to ask questions, teaching you the questions rather than the answers, this is just the starter set, the very obvious ones. Now you need to use those four articles to help explore around the edges and come up with the rest of the list that I haven't put on here. Because it's the rest of the list under here that could be absolutely critical when you start designing that service, that IT system or something, for your client with Cli in Clive's module. <laughs> so the question then becomes, okay, so we've now identified some of the critical, important stakeholders in our project. But what's the relationship between knowing who the stakeholders are and developing that high-level, middle-level, low-level sets of requirement specifications. And you need to use Zapman architecture, enterprise architecture, to really think about who is defining the needs of the service, who defines the technologies, the functional requirements, that's what the things it does, and just as critically, 
the non-functional requirements. Because what you've got to do if you're designing a new service, an app, or a total system, you need to think about the non-functional requirements right from day one. You cannot reverse engineer into an existing app the fundamental security, for example, that you need to have there. And if we look at what's been going on in a whole range of hacks over the last two, three years, whether it's the hacks into the control system of a, that car, that uh, Range Rover, I think it was, um, on the M1 a few months ago that some white hat hackers had done to specifically identify how dangerous current implementations of electronic control systems and communication through CAN bus to the um, Wi-Fi and the media, multimedia systems, they were able to actually take over from a distance that particular car or vehicle and actually apply the brakes, actually apply the, um, the accelerator, actively switch off the engine. Or you think about the problems that happened with Talk Talk last week, with Target, Christmas a year or so back, and so on. All of those are because security is not engineered in at the beginning. So I would argue those are the most fundamental requirements there is. Yeah, we'll get the functional ones, how the app is supposed to work, how it's supposed to manipulate data and do things. That's easy. That is crucially and critically important. It links into what you'll be covering next year in the third, sorry, in the third year in um, inf sustainable information and corporate governance. The things that I'm talking about next week in Palo Alto. I'm talking about, yeah, these things are somewhat iffy and random in their accuracy, but the governance questions relating to the use of that location data, which is of uncertain veracity, we don't know which data is true, we don't know which data is incorrect, and we do not know how incorrect that data is. It could be 25 meters incorrect, it could be, under extreme circumstances, 1,600 kilometers wrong. How do we identify through non these non-functional requirements, the governance questions of how much of that data can we trust? How do we know when we can trust that data? So these are critically important. These are important. And then these are the people who kind of help you design the whole thing. So how do you put it together? Because this is how you then build these questions about stakeholders, about Zachman Enterprise Architecture, or last week's about business value. How do you put it all together? So you get, take all those ideas from the preceding slides, previous week's slides, and start thinking about, one, what is the service you're going to target? What are the benefits? Because the first level of Zachman Architecture tells you to think about the corporate level, the top level, from the owner uh, kind of perspective. What's in it for me? What's in it for, for other stakeholders, the benefits? Yeah, you need to identify technologies. That's part of the assignment question. What are the relevant technologies that you're going to be using? But think about that. And if you look at last um, semester's enterprise systems uh, module, I think it is, in the YouTube channel for computing, uh, computing at Derby YouTube channel, you will see some questions that come up critically every year about governance. There's four, 13 or 14 Vs of big data. The questions about how do I know what these are? at governance levels and at a technical level. What do we need to do to design things? And you can also refer back to, was it last week or the week before, when, no, it was last week, when I was looking at Cloud Borers from control to drift. That little diagram of how strategies start pure and clean at the top level, and then when they collide with reality, things go interestingly difficult with the <coughs> 
problems with existing infrastructure and architecture that you can't change in time because of, and you get the all sorts of unintended consequences. You need to try to identify those before you get there. You see, if we talk, look in the political sphere, the politicians and some business managers, but not many, but politicians love to have unintended consequences. We had this lovely concept, and oh dear, oh well, we hadn't thought of that one. And I find that those unintended consequences are almost always foreseeable. There are a small number which we cannot foresee, but the majority are uh, identifiable if we think about second and third order consequence. I mean, look at what the government's doing today. They've been introduced after the election the idea they're going to do some massive cuts in terms of um, working credits. And the political row that is going on to, over the last week or two has led to some <coughs> very, very embarrassing um, situations for the, for the government. How are they going to get out of this hole of four point something billion uh, working credits that have got to be they want to cut, but they're to hitting the poorest, the most needy, those who are actually actively helping themselves to work, and they're going to lose thirteen hundred quid a month uh, a year, hundred quid a month out of their budget, and the government said, well, they'll be all right in three, four, five years' time by 2020 when the minimum wage is increased to £9.20 a week, uh, an hour. It ain't. And the hurt is today, not five years. They haven't thought through second, third order consequences, so they can kind of say, well, that was an unintended consequence. We didn't expect it to happen. We didn't expect this row. So... Think it through ever so carefully. Think through second, third order consequences. If they had thought through second and third order consequences, the motor manufacturers would have realised that the security problems of a single data bus, the CAN bus within a car, control systems connected to the Wi-Fi multimedia systems, is dangerous, stunningly dangerous. Yes, they still want to be able to communicate for some of the top-end cars back back to base, each car transmitting all of their data about how it's being used so they can maintain it and give you a warning. You know, one of the things that guy was telling me this morning was they want to be able to met notice that your side light, your left-hand side light has blown and send you a text by return. Why do I need a text on that to tell me the side light has gone rather than a little bulb or little picture come up on the um, dashboard? Why put at risk your customers to hacking which will inevitably hack into these cars? We've seen it done three times already, I think, by students and white hat hackers. It will not get better. So, what needs to be solved? What are the other important issues? And they kind of come a ra random range that you've got to think about. This creativity I was talking about earlier, this inquisitiveness that's necessary to become effective. And all of that stuff helps you to answer your first part of the assignment. Thinking through those questions will help you to identify some of the technology that you might need to solve this kind of issue. It then leads through to the second stage, which is the key input for your design using the Zachman Enterprise architecture. And, you know, we're running late, so we won't be able to do it now, but out of this work, this should guide you as you develop the structure and the content of your article, of your assignment. Okay.